Excellent. So yes, to answer your question, what you will be able to see, give me a moment to get it set up. is I do have a board. Can you see this? Yep. Where I'm going to be able to write and draw things. So, right. So there's our, you know, actin and our myosin and our myosin heads. And so I will be able to uh, do all my amazing drawings and be able to uh, talk about things that way. So, yes, yeah, so we will be able to do some of that as well. So I can go back and forth between the lectures and the uh, between the lectures and a, and a drawing pad where I'll be able to make notes or write things out. I won't do all the writing on the board like I normally do to give people time, but if I want to do illustrations, this will allow me to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it looks good. Excellent. Well, I'm not sure "good" is the right word, but <laughs> hopefully, it will work. Can you put it in like landscape instead of portrait? Do you know or okay. no? See, so again, when it's I'm using I'm using my wife's iPad and I can do it when I turn the iPad sideways. It does that. So notice I don't know if you see that oh, change. Yeah, well. yeah, it's a bit. That, but I can't. I haven't figured out yet how to make it go the whole length of the field of view. So I'm not sure. I guess I can tinker with that and see if I can figure out how to do that. There's got to be a way to do that, right? You would think. Yeah, possibly. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a lot that's bigger now. Yeah, okay. So that's a little better, I guess. Yeah, so that seems to be the... So, but it still works. And then that corner and that corner. In that corner and that corner so we can see all the corners so that's what i see in my field of view so okay yeah i see all the marks you made okay cool so that should be that's going to be the game plan so um the one thing i haven't totally decided for us yet for the 431 class we are supposed to go into the digestive system and that's what you guys have been preparing for but it's a quick three or four lecture and then turn around for the exam. So I'm thinking it might be better to switch to our, um, instead do the uh, digestive and urinary, since it doesn't miss, I mean, no, sorry, do the, uh, I guess it would be respiration urinary, which would be the next section, which would give us more lectures and more time before we actually had the exam. So that's oh, okay. the only thing I need to decide between now and Wednesday. Uh, my 430 class has their skeletal system exam tomorrow so uh so i'm focusing on that right now but i'm just trying to limit how much online testing we have to do and so switching to a longer section might be something that would be better for that okay yeah because it would have only been like three lectures and then uh and then a test yeah and so that's and we're, we're already going to be a day behind so because we're yeah because we missed today so i think that that might be a better option to because a lot of the sense Hello, everyone. I see more people are adding. Feel free to speak up and ask any questions that you have. Is there a way for you guys to type answers? I mean, type questions? Or do you have to use the microphone? There's an annotate. Can you guys annotate the, the screen? There's a Zoom group chat. Oh, what's that? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, interesting. Great. More things that I have to pay attention to. Now, when I type there, does that automatically come up for everybody or? I can see it. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. So right now I have a whiteboard on that I'm going to be using to do my amazing drawings so that you guys don't miss those, right? So when we start talking about a sarcomere, oops, we'll be able to draw, there's our Z disc and our actin and our myosin and all that fun stuff. Uh, but the other thing we'll be doing, and let me switch back to that. Uh, there we go. 
So I will also have my uh, lecture slides that will be up like this and we will be able to go through the lecture slides. So what I will do is uh, just lecture the same way that I normally would talking about these things. I won't do as much writing on the board, but I will be able to do my illustrations as you saw. So we'll be able to do that. So we'll go through that. Uh, just like normal lecture, I expect you to ask questions. You can either speak out and do that or uh, on the participants, there is a way for you to raise your hand. So if you uh, click the raise your hand, uh, oh, I don't have a raise hand. I must probably because I'm the host. Uh, but, uh, but Brad, can you demonstrate again how you raised your hand? There you go. So you can do that. I will try to pay attention for that as that shows up. Um, and then also I'll have the group chat up where you guys can make comments there. If you don't have a microphone or don't want to speak, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions that way. Uh, and if someone raises their hand and I'm not paying attention to it, someone please just holler and make me aware. Can you mute people? I, yes, I, in fact, I can, I do, well, I have, I assume I can, yes, I can individually mute people. I also have the ability to mute all, uh, which I can do like this. And then, uh, but then I also have the choice of allowing you guys to mute or unmute yourself. Okay. So I do have those options. I didn't see how to raise your hand. Uh, so on the list of participants, you should see a list of participants, or you can at least bring your list of participants up. Uh, and on there, there should be on the bottom, there should be like a yes button. So I have a yes button. I have a no button. I have a go slower or go faster button. I have a coffee mug, which says I need a break. Um, yeah, I don't have any of that. Brad, where did you find your uh, hand raise thing? At the bottom of the screen. or So yeah, at the bottom of the screen, there's participants. Or you can hit Alt-U, that brings it up. Oh. Within the, that window, you have all those options for raise hand, yes, no, go slower, go faster. I see it now, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. So yeah, so uh, as uh, for those of you who have just joined, again, I've got the slides here. So we'll go through the slides uh, like we normally would, and I would do my normal uh, lecture as we talk about it that way. I also have a <coughs> board, which, oops, oh, sorry, let me switch to that. Um, the transition back and forth is gonna be a little tricky, but it takes a little bit more time. Nope, I'm gonna that button there. And then, as you can see, I was in the process of drawing a sarcomere. So there's my M lines and my myosin and my Z disc. Let's make my Z discs zigzaggy, like they're supposed to be. So I'll be able to do my drawings. I won't do all the writing on the board the same way I normally do, but, um, but you'll get the sense of it. So at least this way we can interact this way as well. I know it looks like my kid's drawing it, but hey. And then, like I said, then we'll have the uh, slide presentation as well. All right, so for the new people who showed up, what questions can I ask, answer for you? Feel free to ask them vocally or you can type them in the Zoom group chat. There's a Zoom group chat. You can type answer uh, questions there. Um, for those of you who are in the 431 class, as I was explaining to Brad at the beginning of this, uh, I may change the format. I know you guys have been looking at and studying the digestive system, but depending on how long we are going to be out, I'm concerned that that is too short of a section. So uh, I'm going to be trying to decide, uh, I'm trying to be currently setting up for an exam for my 430 class, but once I get that set up, I may switch us to the next section of the class, which is the uh, respiratory system and urinary system, just because it gives us more lectures so we can spend more time uh, online in this and less time testing online. So I'm hoping if we do that, that gives us close to a month 
uh, before uh, we have to have the exam. So I'm hoping that might be a uh, better alternative. But I will let you guys know that decision as, uh, as the next couple of days unfold. Hey, Mariana, uh, great question. Um, so just like the practice lab exam, and again, for those of you in 31, you uh, haven't heard that. Oh. When, uh, apparently someone's getting arrested. <laughs> Don't forget you can mute your, uh, your microphone if you're not speaking, if you like. Um, so. As I was saying, uh, what's going to happen is the same format. There is a practice lecture exam, and it's going to basically be the exact same format for the lab exam. Basically, what's going to happen uh, once you start it in the proctorio process, the same way we're doing that, you will be presented with one question. Uh, it will have uh, one image of a bone or histology or, or model or something like that, and uh, you will answer that question. Uh, once you submit that question, you cannot go back to it. Uh, it's only one question at a time, so it's the same format as the lecture exam. And like the lecture exam, it will be timed. So again, it's not like it's not like the in classroom where you have one, you know, fifty seconds per question. You have to kind of self-regulate your time. So if you really have a question, nail it and go on. So that way, if you need a little bit more time, you have that. Uh, so rather than forcing you to go forward, you control your pace, but you will need to complete it within the set amount of time so that you have uh, enough time to be able to do it. Because if you go over time, there will be a point penalty. Uh, they are going to be like the, uh, like the lecture exam. Uh, no, it's not going to be the eight questions. Uh, no, it's going to be fewer than 88 questions uh, because this is in the classroom. Both the lab and lecture exam will be worth fewer points because I don't want this uh, odd format to be. Uh, I don't want this odd format to uh, affect our grade too much. Uh, so again, it's not going to be weighed as heavily as the other exam, but um, I guess it's probably going to be close to the 50 or 60. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the fun at home, uh, of at home. Here, I'll tell you what, let's do this. I will start with everybody muted, and then as uh, you choose to uh, uh, speak, you can unmute so that uh, you have the opportunity to talk that way. So let's do that. So yes, so you, and, and the other difference between the, on, uh, so again, the format is going to be the same as the one that is on there. One question at a time with a time limit. Uh, it'll all be images and you will type in. Uh, two things to remember, uh, all of these are set up as essay questions, quote unquote. Uh, that way, um, you know, the format doesn't matter. For instance, if I did a fill in the blank and you wrote, you know, a greater tubercle of the humerus and I on the answer key wrote humerus greater tubercle, then it would mark that wrong. So it's gonna be essay questions. So that means they're all gonna be manually graded. So when you complete it, it will show your score as zero, not because you got a zero, but just because I'm gonna to need to have to go in and manually grade all of the exams. Uh, so uh, again, it's obviously that makes sense for the essay questions, but the lab exam is gonna be set up that way as well. So you have plenty of space to write. Don't have to worry about the format as much to make sure you have the words in the precise order or anything like that. You're just gonna to have to write out the correct answer. So the real issue is just monitoring your time. Again, I'm, I'm for uh, Emma, a uh, great question as you came in on that. I, um, oh, great question, yes. If we switch to the respiratory and urinary, I will upload that material online. I, like I said, my focus with having to have both a lab and lecture exam online for my 430 class tomorrow, because tomorrow is when they're taking that. Uh, this weekend, I have been, uh, I've been focusing solely on that to get that completed. I've just been in the back of my mind, been thinking about what we are going to do, and I think that that is a better use of our time. So I'm 90% sure we'll be switching to urinary and respiratory. Uh, and you're absolutely right. When, that, uh, when I make that decision, which will probably be later today, I will post it to remind you, and yes, I will switch which unit is available on uh, Canvas so that you can access the correct material. 
and then obviously uh, all homework assignments are not going to be due. So you're not gonna have to worry about turning those in. Uh, the two exams are gonna be separate, so and you can take them in either order that you want. Um, uh, so if we do it, and uh, so when we do it, yeah, you can do it in either order that you want. And my guess is both exams are going to be around an hour. Uh, and uh, the lab exam will probably have between 50 and 60 questions. So it'll somewhere be around there. So my guess is that you'll have a little less than a minute per question to be able to, uh, to, be able to answer that. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll try to mute that next time. Um, so yeah, so you'll have, uh, you'll have a little less than a minute or about a minute per question. Again, uh, I am not requiring because of the feedback that I got. I know not everybody necessarily has the um, video cameras set up or capable of using them right now. So for this first exam, because it's such short notice, I'm not requiring to use the full Proctorio process where you have to videotape your surroundings and you're gonna be monitored with a camera. But if this goes on for a prolonged period of time, uh, we will probably have to switch to something like that. Uh, as far as homework assignments, you will not be doing the turning in the homework assignments now. I fully expect you to take the time and do them and complete them. And then when we're back in the classroom, you will turn them in then. Because I want you to get the points for studying them and for working on those things. So I do expect you to do that. But I don't want 500 emails of everybody sending me their PDFs of them and having to deal with that that way. So I expect you to complete them. I expect you to finish them. And when we get back on campus, you will turn them in. Excellent, got a lot of people showing up. This is spectacular, this means this is working. So again, you can uh, ask questions with your microphone. Again, you can talk, you're welcome and encouraged to do that. Uh, this will be the format uh, since we have a bunch more people. As you can see, I have the lecture slides up here. I can uh, go through the lectures the same way we normally would. So what I will do when we're doing the lectures, and again, remember we'll do that through Canvas. Uh, I will talk just like I would normally talk, go through the slides the same way we would normally go through the slides. And I also, although it takes me a few moments to switch, give me a second. I have a whiteboard where I can do our drawing. So like for instance, if we start on the respiratory system, uh, you can see clearly that is a mouth and that is a trachea into our bronchi that feed into the two lungs, and the air comes in and out of. So I'll be able to uh, do my normal amazing drawings. Of course, it's in my lap with an iPad and a pen, stylus, so it's gonna be even worse than it normally is, but I will still be able to talk about it. And, oh, hey, there's an ovulus in there, and we can talk about the uh, intrapleural pressure and all kind of fun things like that. So we will be able to uh, still have that interaction of me being able to do drawings and things along those lines. I won't obviously be writing out the lectures along with you the same way that uh, I will uh, in the classroom, but uh, we do have uh, at least some things so I can do more interactive things like drawing or showing things that need to be demonstrated. Uh, with the muscle system, I guess we will not be able to study it in the real class, or is there hope? I don't know, uh, obviously. The one nice thing about the muscular system is there's a tremendous amount of physiology. It's probably the, probably not the hardest, but it is the longest physiological portion uh, that we have. So we are gonna have a lot to talk about. We're gonna take that muscle and break it down microscopically to basically the proteins that form it, and then see how those proteins work together to interact. How we're gonna handle the lab part, obviously we're not gonna be able to have the models in our hands, but I will remind you again, and that's probably something I can bring up as well. I'll play with that for the canvas. We may be able to uh, bring up the, uh, our personal anatomy lab in the Physio X. The one great thing about the personal anatomy lab in our Physio X is that it actually has, um, it actually has uh, pictures of the models that are almost identical to the one in the classroom. So it's a great way to look at the material and test ourselves on the material and play with it that way. So there will be a lab component to that. Um, I do, uh, so the classes will mostly start 
online at the same time for my Monday, Wednesday class, uh, where we normally start at seven o'clock in the morning. I am going to switch us to eight. Since uh, this format probably won't go quite as long as the classroom, we should still be able to, between 8 and 11.30, uh, be able to cover the material in a meaningful fashion. So that way you'll have the opportunity to get the information with sleeping in a little bit. But again, I appreciate that real life uh, affects everybody and people have jobs. So you guys signed up for this class at these particular times. So these times should be when you're available. So the Monday, Wednesday class will be from 8 to 11.30, and the Tuesday, Thursday class will be normal from 12 to 4.30. So we will keep that format the same, because uh, I expect most people to be able to make it at those times, and that would give you a chance to ask your questions or do things along those lines. However, if because of childcare or all the other craziness that is going on, uh, we will be recording. I am recording this lecture as well. And these lectures I will post on the YouTube site. I was not satisfied with the option of, um, I, I was not, uh, hold on. I was not uh, happy with the options that I have for posting it directly to our Canvas site. So I think the easiest and simplest way for people to be able to access it is going to be to put it on to YouTube. Now I have never put a video as long as these are going to be on there. So I don't know if it's gonna be better to break it up into parts. So if we'll do that and take breaks in between or what, we'll see what happens when I try to post this practice one. So we'll see what happens and, and what goes on with that. But uh, there should be recordings of these things so that you can see that. Whoops, what just happened there? I don't want that, I don't want that. Okay. Um, uh, so the unit reviews uh, are uh, not going to be turned in. Uh, to, as of right now, I do fully expect you to complete the unit reviews. It's obviously a way to study the same way it always is. It's basically forcing you to think about the material and forcing you guys to study. So I fully expect you to do them. I do not want to be receiving 500 emails of all the PDFs of all of those though. So instead, what I will expect you to do is to go ahead and do them, complete them and hold on to them. And then when we get them back into the classroom, you will turn them in then and I will check off that you did them and we'll do it that way. So unless we're out for an overly extended period of time, I think that is the best way to handle it. All right, next question. Uh, by a show of hands, uh, <laughs> let's do this first. All right, further participant, I would, uh, what I'd like everybody to do is to go ahead and uh, using the uh, manage participants or whatever it is that you guys see uh, to click the raise your hand icon so that everybody uh, can see or acknowledge that they see that. So can you please raise your hand? Excellent, that's a good start. Uh, I will use this, one of the nice things about this when you raise your hand, it does raise you to the top of the list of my participants, so hopefully that will help me to be able to see it. Um, so uh, you will be able to do that. Uh, Vanessa, so um, there is a way, there's, uh, say again, um, is Brad still with us? So can someone provide some assistance? There we go. Participants, bottom right icon is the hand icon. So there you go. So go to the participants. And uh, that, should, that should allow you to be able to do that. Excellent. Everybody but the last couple people still haven't done it. A few more. They may have fallen asleep already. Excellent, all right, most of you get the idea of that, so that's something you can do. Uh, hopefully all of you are seeing the group chat as well. That is a way that you are able to ask questions. Uh, again, I, uh, you are welcome and encouraged to use your microphones to ask questions, to speak up when I'm lecturing, uh, to get my attention. If I'm not paying attention, raising your hand is an easy way to do it. That won't disrupt things too much. 
uh, and then you can either type your question or you can just say it on the microphone and we can respond to it that way. Uh, I will try to pay attention for questions on the group chat and try to pay attention for hands that are raising. Um, but um, if I don't, if I miss it, because you know how it is, I get enthusiastic about what I'm doing and I um, don't catch it, then by all means, uh, holler and grab my attention. That is my worst fear. <laughs> so I was hoping for TikTok famous, but I guess I'll have to settle for YouTube famous. Yes, I, my, my subscriptions have uh, jumped almost 800%. I went from one to eight. So yes, I am well on my way to becoming YouTube famous. If I continue to jump with an 800% increase in uh, subscribers from now to the end of class, then yes, then I won't have to teach anymore. I'll just be uh, rich from YouTube. because everybody wants to learn about anatomy and physiology. So for those of you who are here from 430, yes, and then you can also get my attention that way. Notice you do have the ability to annotate the screen. Uh, you all should have that ability to be able to do that. I can do that as well, I believe. Yep, see, so I can put a text window there and add things that way. Uh, although, like I said, the slides, as you've seen, are mostly what I want to add uh, to it myself. Um, so, like I said, when I need to add things, I'll most likely use the uh, the drawing app that I have on my iPad to be able to do that. So, for those who have not seen that yet, we can switch again one more time. You think my handwriting and drawings are bad on the board? Just wait till you see what it's like using a stylus on a iPad in my lap, but I have a screen that I can share with you. So for instance, as we move on to the muscular system and we start talking about our myofibril and how our myofibril is made up of sarcomeres and we want to bring that sarcomere out and we can talk about the Z discs that are the proteins that form those and then the actin filaments that connect to those and then between those we have that thick myosin filament with those big myosin heads those motors that are gonna grab and pull. And then we have the titan, which it helps to stabilize that and hold it in place. The myomycin, that is gonna stabilize that. The tropomycin that blocks the myosin, the troponin as that specialized protein. So we'll be able to play with all of those things. And uh, that. oh, good luck with your cat. I hope everything is okay, Esther. Thanks for stopping by. Again, the point of this was to see how to make sure that everybody could understand what they are doing and what they need. Uh, and then also with the test for 430, if anybody has any questions or concerns, I'm happy to address those as well. But so I will be able to do some uh, drawing and other uh, abilities with that. So I have that, and then we'll be able to switch back and forth between this and uh, my slide presentation so that you can see that. So you can see we have the slides and we can go through all of those things as we talked about. So we'll have all of that as well. All right, so like I said, I'm here for you. What can I do to answer for you guys? Uh, great question. Uh, so again, looks like this was sent to me privately, so I will read it out loud. Uh, would you be available during our lab slash lecture test uh, to clear up questions we might have like you do in class or is that luxury gone? Uh, and unfortunately, the answer to that is the luxury of that is indeed gone. Uh, the format uh, for this test is not ideal. It's not definitely not what I would prefer. None of us, I did not sign up to teach an online class. You certainly didn't sign up to take an online class. Uh, so unfortunately, we are limited by what we're able to do. And in an attempt to maintain the integrity, and again, a lot of that is on US students, but in an attempt, there are certain restrictions that have to be in place. Uh, because of the speed at which this exam took place, 
I'm not requiring you to use the full Proctario where you have to have your webcam and it has to be on, you have to scan your environment and it has to observe you the whole time and all of those things. I'm not forcing you to do that, but there are a lot of other restrictions in place. Uh, you cannot uh, cut and paste the, sc the screen, you cannot do screenshots, you cannot have other tabs open, you cannot switch from the exam, and all. There's, there are a lot of restrictions. And the other restriction, two restrictions really, is you only see a question once, and uh, once you submit it, you can't go back to it. And you're also only getting the questions once at a, one at a time. And again, uh, there, so there's no way to ask questions. There's no way to interact with me in that fashion because you're supposed to be locked into that test while you're taking it. And unfortunately, it's going to have a very tight time restriction. Uh, it's not going to be like five minutes per question or anything like that. Uh, but uh, the way it's set up is you do have a complete amount of time that you have to take that test. And it is on you to make sure that you are monitoring your time closely. Uh, if you know you have an hour for your 60 uh, lab exam questions and you spend five minutes on the first question, you know you're going to have to be able to make that up. Now, hopefully some of the other ones you'll be able to have more time with, uh, but unfortunately, it's the nature of this test. We need to limit people's ability to have time to cheat. So unfortunately for this test, you either have to know it or you don't. You have to go through quickly. I can't allow students to go back on questions because what I could do as a student is that I could say, oh, hey, I don't remember anything about endochondrial ossification. Hey, Billy, can you go look that up for me while I answer this other question and then I can come back and answer that one later? So unfortunately, that's the way it's gotta be. So again, it's not ideal. On the flip side, the one thing about these tests or both of these tests are gonna be fewer questions and worth fewer points than the previous exams. Uh, because I don't want them weighed equally because of this, the uniqueness and less ideal aspects of this uh, testing format, these tests should not be on par with the tests that you've already taken. So there will be fewer questions. It will be worth fewer points. This is something we're being forced to do, but I want to try to minimize the impact of it. Now, the one downside of that is that also means that uh, if you have not been as successful, you're, you're being successful on this one will not have as big of an impact on your grade, but still doing well on it will impact your grade and help you to be successful. So I do hope to limit that. And I'm hoping that I am hopeful, although I am doubtful, but I am hopeful this will be the only test we have to do online. So that's why for those of you who are a little late to uh, this from the 431, as I was talking to some of the students earlier, uh, my goal for the 431 is to, instead of going into the digestive switch system, I think we may switch into the respiratory and the urinary system uh, so that instead of having three lectures and then a quick turnaround exam, uh, we can have six lectures and go almost a month of lecture without having to take a test. But like I said, for those of you in my 431, my 430 class has two tests tomorrow, a lab and a lecture exam that I'm scrambling and still have not finished writing yet. Um, but I will, uh, so once I get that done, then I will figure out what we're gonna be doing in 431. Which is also why I haven't graded any of your 431 exams yet either, because I just not, have not had the opportunity. But I think that will be the best use of our time rather than having to do a, another less ideal, um, another less ideal uh, online exam if we can make more meaningful use of the time by using that time to lecture and discuss anatomy and physiology, I think that will be a better thing. All right, next question. So obviously everybody here has figured out how Zoom works. As I mentioned, we will be um, doing all of our exams, uh, not lectures, I should say, uh, on the Zoom in Canvas. So you should be able to access it that way. So make sure you check that out. But I'm glad you're here. Uh, by a show of hands, and again, so use your raise your hand under the participants uh, thing. Raise your hand if you are in the 430 class and you have taken the practice exam. Mm 
one of you. Does that mean you're all? No, there are a couple more. Excellent. Make sure you do that. That format, it's a little awkward. Uh, you have to make sure you have it set up properly. You're going to have a limited window to take these exams, and you want to make sure you work out all the kinks. Also, if you've not completed it, then you should have gotten a, a message from me today through Canvas. I was able to do that from the assignment, so we'll see how that works. All right, more questions? Questions on what we're gonna be doing, questions on the format. Um, Honestly, I, I mean, the questions are, uh, silly is not the right word, but not really. I mean, one of the first question is one of the first potential questions and it depends on how you got was to put the bones in the, of the arm in alphabetical order. That's clearly not a question you're gonna really have on the exam. So the questions weren't really meant to be meaningful or informative. It was more just to make sure that we understood the process. So as long as you understand the process, but I mean, if you think about the bones of the arm, and again, I, I haven't thought of them in terms of even what the right answer is, but if you think of the bones in the arm, uh, one of the things that I will see is, again, uh, it's, as I've often said, make sure people read the questions carefully, right? I got a lot of bone features, but what it is is the bones of the arm, that the bones of the arm include the radius, the ulna, the humerus, all eight of the carpals, so trapezium, you know, trapezoid, trapetrum, all of those, uh, the metacarpals and the phalanges. So those are all of the bones of the arm and so they need to be put in order. So what I think uh, the capitum is the first one and so on and so forth. So, but because I haven't finished even writing the exams yet, grading those practice exams is not something that is important for me just simply because uh, like I said, they weren't meaningful questions. They weren't supposed to be informative questions. It was more just to see the process. However, if you did write a note on the last question about some kind of questions, I have tried to address those. So if there was anything you were concerned about under the comments of that, I will respond to it uh, that way. But as of right now, I don't anticipate grading them. I like this picture more. I'll go back to that one. Uh, so uh, again, I was just asked the question just for clarification. Um, uh, what I will be lecturing on on Wednesday. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I have not 100% decided because my sole focus this weekend has been on getting uh, the exams ready for 4.30. Uh, but what I was thinking, what I have been thinking would be a better use of our time in 4.31 would be to switch to respiratory and urinary system. The digestive system is a quick three lecture section, a small section, and then we have an exam. And they refuse to put a number on how long we are going to be out. But if we base it on the information we've been hearing from other sources, it could be as little as four weeks, it could be as many as eight weeks. I'm hoping we will be closer to the four weeks. And if we were closer to the four weeks, then if we switched and did the urinary and respiratory system first, and talked about those first, that would give us six lectures, uh, which would be almost a month's worth of time before we would have to worry about an exam. And so I think that uh, using this online format to learn about the material is much better than using this format for testing. So I think that that would be a better use of time. So I'm 90% certain we'll be switching to respiratory and urinary, which means we would start with respiratory first. Uh, I will be making that decision later today because uh, like I said, after I finish the exams the, for 4.30 for tomorrow, then I will work on that. Uh, and then if once that decision is made, what I will do is I will switch the canvas so that you can access the lectures and the resources for the uh, urinary and respiratory systems instead of the digestive. So 
Uh, I know you've done the prelabs, but eventually we're going to get back to the digestive system. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so we're going to juggle this. I think we're going to juggle the schedule because I think it uses the best use of our time. Excellent. We're up to 20 participants. That is excellent. I know a couple of people have already came and left early. I think most people are being able to figure out how to get this to work, and that is excellent. Oh, and then now that I said that, we lost someone. But with 60 students. So maybe you guys, oh, so two other things that I wanted to mention. If this goes on for a prolonged period of time, uh, one of the things that the school is offering is there are uh, allegedly laptops that students can have access to to be able to uh, have the materials necessary for the online uh, components. You're supposed to, I believe I was told, go to the library today or tomorrow uh, to be able to do that. Has, have you guys been notified of that? Has anyone heard anything about that? You can either raise your hand or type it. Have you have students been aware of the fact that that is av potentially available? Okay, so you might, it might be something maybe look on the main website. I, the last I heard, they had not come in yet. So uh, I think that was one of the things that was delaying things, but that is one of the things that allegedly they were supposed to be able to do. Oh, hey, that's cool. When you guys say yes and no, I get a running tally of how many people say yes and no by clicking the buttons. Okay, so CRC, excellent. So CRC has uh, started it. So they're on their way. The, hopefully that means the laptops are coming in. Uh, so that is a good thing. Um, crap, I don't remember what the other thing I was going to say was. Oh, I guess it wasn't important. I'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, so that is one of the things that is potentially available for you. And what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, uh, the other thing I was curious about, and again, not that I'm encouraging anyone to do this, but I also know that there was at one point talk of you guys being able to get refunds if you dropped. Is anybody, did you guys get notification of that? I don't know if that's true or not. I was just curious. So yes, uh, I will. You, yes, great question. Uh, so again, for those of you who don't see it, uh, and again, feel free to post these to everyone so everyone can see the questions. Um, if I win, I change the 431 schedule, and I think in all likelihood that is what I'm going to do. Uh, not only will I switch the resources that are available, but I will update our uh, schedule as well so that you have the correct uh, information of what the game plan is going to be. So I will work on that as well. So yeah, like I said, unfortunately, uh, 430 with this uh, horrible test tomorrow that we have to now change from what we were doing on in campus to online. It has been uh, the bane of my existence and my sole entire focus for the past uh, two and a half days. So uh, aside from trying to set all this stuff up too for the lecture as well. So yeah, it's been a tremendous amount of fun. So while you guys have been out partying, uh, my head has been spinning like a clock. I told the dean we should just make everybody happy and give everybody A's, but she said no. So I think you should complain to her. Any more questions? I know we called this a lecture, but I really don't have, you know, content information that I was planning on presenting. It was more just an opportunity to, again, work out the kinks of the system, and then also give you an opportunity to record a real lecture and see about the posting of that and what the best way to do that is. So hopefully that is something that will work for us. Um, I'm going to run this for the whole time, but I don't, again, I'm, I, I, new to YouTube, so I don't know if they have a limit on how long. I don't know how they're gonna feel about me posting a three hour lecture up there. I don't know if we'll have to break that up. Does anybody know? Can you have really long? Is there a limit on how long a video can be in YouTube? You guys gotta be more tech savvy about this stuff than I am. Hopefully, hopefully it's not. Oh, 10 plus hour videos, awesome. Okay, that'll be perfect. In full movies, okay. 
It also depends on how old your account is. Well, I'm very old, so I don't know if that, uh, so uh, hopefully that's good. Okay. Well, so we will find out. Like I said, this is, that's, the other, that's the other test aspect of this. It's going to give us an opportunity to see uh, from that aspect. Like I said, I wasn't happy with what uh, Canvas allowed. Uh, the 30 point skeleton review should be posted. Uh, hold on. Now you have me worried. I'll give me a second. Or I'll check that. Yeah, normally when the assignment is turned in, even though I have not graded them yet. So again, I haven't graded them any, I haven't done any grading because I've been solely focused on trying to get this exam written. But uh, typically when an assignment is due, the key for it should be posted on, uh, should be posted on Canvas. But I can double check to make sure it's there. Yeah, the Dean said no for everyone getting it. She said, she did say I, get, get, I could give everyone Fs though if I wanted to, but I figured you guys probably didn't want that. All righty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I, I don't know. I, I assume we'll still have a, a spring break, but I don't actually know. I, I don't know what they're going to do with the schedule. I don't know if they're going to count our three day hiatus as part of that and give us a shorter spring break. I, I, I don't know. I know my students to my students, my kids' school, um, basically they're on break through spring break. So they're off for the next couple of weeks and then they're supposed to come back after spring break. So the implication there is clearly that they have a spring break. Um, I know we have to have a set number of hours. So yeah, the 30 point skeletal review should be available on uh, Canvas. So when you get on Canvas, uh, under the answer keys, your 30 point skeletal review key should be there. So you should have that to study from. But yeah, I, I believe my understanding is that uh, my kids are still getting a spring break. I assume we will as well, because while there's a certain number of hours, we also are required to you know, stay under a certain number of hours as well. So I imagine that, but I, I know other school districts started their spring break early to compensate for it. So one of the things that have been very frustrating about the way Los Rios has done things is they have done it differently from the other districts around us. Uh, when we're going to be back is a great question. Whereas other districts are, you know, allowing some limited classes to meet, are allowing uh, instructors to come on campus to be able to meet with students one on one or be able to do things like that. Uh, Los Rios is not allowing any of that. Starting Wednesday, I am actually forbidden from coming on campus. So if I don't, for instance, go get the things that I need out of my office tomorrow, then I can't get them because starting Wednesday, nobody's allowed on campus. The other frustrating thing is they refuse to tell us when we're going to be back in class. They refuse to give us a timetable of any sort. All they tell us to do is to focus on what's going on right now, do the best we can for students right now. And, you know, as more information comes in, we'll have a better idea. But so they haven't told us how they're going to change the schedule, if it's going to affect spring break, when we're going to be able to go back. All they've told us is come Wednesday, no one's allowed on campus. We have to be completely online. I don't know how they're going to, I guess they lock the parking lots, but still there are plenty of ways to get on campus. But I don't know if they're going to have dogs patrolling or what. I don't know. But however it is, their plans are to keep us off of campus. And so uh, I honestly have no idea. So this whole thing is new for all of us. So we're all just going to have to deal with some growing pains. The timing of it is crappy though. Like I said, the, if it wasn't for the exam tomorrow, then uh, I think things would have been a lot easier for this in this transition. 
but uh, the exam tomorrow for the 430 class is uh, not wasn't is not fun to make I'm not even done making it uh, but uh, it's not going to be fun for you to take it's a crummy way to have to uh, change completely change the format of how we're doing these things again as I've said many times one of the things I love about this class is that it's hard and so everything can be incredibly straightforward the tests are straightforward the essay questions are straightforward everything's straightforward and the problem with this online format is things can't be straightforward anymore so we're all going to have to deal with the growing pains. But like I said, I will find ways to mitigate that. As I've mentioned, one of the things that they'll be doing uh, is that, um, uh, like I said, I'll be de-emphasizing it point-wise so it doesn't affect it quite as much. Yeah, I think when we get to the lecture, I think we'll take regular break breaks like in class. Um, and again, like in class, you, if you need to step aside or walk away from your computer, you're welcome to do that because I will be recording that. So I, I will take that when we're doing, again, when I'm presenting content, it makes more sense to take a break. In fact, we might even maybe stop the recordings and then come back or something like that during those times uh, to help break up the, the links of the videos as well. Uh, yes, you, I mean, look, knowledge is always good for the physio X. Uh, I mean, you can do it because you're going to need to know it eventually. But like I said, I think eventually we're going to, I think, like I said, I think the most likely and the, the smartest solution for us is to uh, switch topics. So I think that makes more sense intuitively because we can spend more time lecturing and, and less time worrying about another poorly formatted online exam. Uh, but again, you're gonna to need to know the in information eventually. So there certainly isn't any harm in, uh, in doing the uh, physio X. But uh, again, cause you're not gonna be, oh, I see you, it is set up where you can turn it on now, turn it in. Cause today's supposed to be the start. But yeah, I wouldn't worry about it yet. Cause like I said, I think I, I'm 90% certain that we'll switch just cause it seems to make so much more sense. But the physio X's are a tremendous amount of fun. So if you want to do the digestive now so you don't have to do it later, that's fine too. So again, I'm here for you guys. If you have questions, like I said, there isn't really any content. So I'm here for you to ask questions about the process, about anything else that's going on, and I will happily answer them. I don't know how many new people we have gotten in here, but again, remember we've got the lecture slides that we'll be looking at, and I do have a, uh, I do have an iPad. With, uh, with a whiteboard that I can basically write on uh, and do drawings and stuff on that way as well to present the information. All right, well, since we seem to have hit a lull, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go run and get a cup of coffee real fast. So I'm going to take a quick, uh, you know, three minute break, go get that and come right back. Like I said, if you have more questions when you come back, you're welcome to do that. But really the goal of this was to make sure that we understand the format and what it is that you guys are doing so that we're prepared to hit the ground running on Wednesday. So again, don't feel bad if you want to leave, but I'm here if you have any questions or concerns or anything else that you want addressed. So I'm going to mute my, mute my microphone go grab a cup of coffee and I will be back in two minutes.
So I'm back. Looks like we've lost most of the people, but at least a couple of people are still here. So you've had some time. Any uh, questions I can answer? And you're welcome to use your microphone to speak or uh, type. Uh, yes. Hi. So, um, I, it's actually about the digestive system. Yes. Because I thought we were going to do it. Um, well, you can still ask it. We're going to do it eventually. Okay. So, under um, on the list of anatomy that you gave us, under teeth, there's some um, some structures we're responsible for that are like similar to the labels in the book but their names are a little bit different so i was wondering is um because on the picture it says bone but on your list it says bony alveoli is that the same well uh, so the bony alveoli if you remember an alveoli is basically like a ball shape or socket shaped structure so the bony alveoli is basically the hole in the maxilla and the mandible that the tooth sits in Okay. So if you think about it, if you remember, yeah, and which is good because our 430 students are learning bones right now. When we talked about joints, the, the, even though the tooth technically isn't a bone, it does form a fibrous joint with the maxilla and the mandible. So basically the two bone features are the tooth and the socket of the jaw, and that socket is called the alveoli. And then there is a fibrous connective tissue that is the periodontal ligament that basically holds the two of them together. Okay. Is it also the same as the periodontal membrane? Yes. Periodontal ligament, periodontal membrane. Okay. And then also, um, it says on the list, it says cementum, but on the picture, it says cement. Is that the same? So the cementum is the, um, if you think of the outer surface of the tooth, the part of the tooth that is exposed has enamel over the top, that hardened hydroxyapatite crystals. The part that is attached to the bone needs a flat surface, and that flat surface that basically covers the neck and the root of the tooth is the cementum. Does that make sense? Um, I'm gonna, can you see the picture? Here, hold on. Oops. On my screen, I'm pointing at it on the, pic the picture in the book. Um, hold on, hold on. Uh, I don't know how to, do I have to pause sharing to see? No, that doesn't work. Um, I'm not sure how I see your, I'm not seeing your, oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Okay, so on the list it says cementum, but here it says cement. Is that the same thing, this structure here, or no? 
Hold on. Trying to see if I can figure a way to. I'm trying to figure a way to make that big so that I can see. Maybe that. No. Uh, what page in the, is that in the textbook? Yes, page eight eight zero. Eight eight zero. Yeah. All right. Let me grab my textbook one. We'll see if we can figure it out that way. Okay. Yeah, the, the cement, what, what they have listed as cement is the cementum, yes. Basically, as you can see, it's the outer layer of, if you look at the tooth, the tooth is mostly dentin. The inner surface of the, the inner components of the tooth is that dentin, which is basically like um, columns of kind of like calcified cartilage. That's essentially what dentum is. Okay. And uh, so it needs an outer shell. So basically the outer shell of it is this smooth uniform material called cementum. And so basically the, if you think about it, the fibrous joint is basically between the uh, thin layer of compact bone of the bony alveolus, the cementum of the tooth, and then that periodontal membrane holding the two of them together. Okay. And there's also a section that says the pulp cavity. Um, so that means it's the section that contains pulp, right? Because on the list it just says pulp. Well, so notice you have both. Pulp, pulp is the substance. It is the nerves. It is the areolar connective tissue. It is the blood vessels. All of that collection of stuff inside the tooth is the pulp. And obviously, if it's inside the tooth, the same way that a bear lives in a cave, the pulp lives in the pulp cavity. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yep, that was it? Yeah, that's it. Excellent. So like I said, the, the, the bad news is I think we're going to switch from the digestive system, but, uh, but we'll get back to it eventually. So now I got to figure out how to... Hmm. Emma, are you still there? Yeah. Can you turn on your camera again for me? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I was just curious if there is a way that I can. Share that. Do you have an option to share a screen? Um, no, um, I'm on my phone and I don't have any options at all really. On the computer, maybe, but I switched okay. my phone. All right, well, that works then. All right, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have an option on the computer where I can swap what Emma was sh sharing with the recorded video. Oh, so you can actually see her. So you could have, you can highlight and see it. Yeah, I think maybe because you're the host, you weren't able to switch. Well, I think it's because I'm sharing my screen. I think if I, if I stop sharing, um, I don't actually know how to stop sharing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Stop share. If I stop, yeah, see, if I stop share, then I see your guys is, so you should just then see my, my um uh my synapse picture right that's all you see for me yeah yeah see and then i can see then i can see emma's big okay so that's how i do it so the problem is i was sharing my screen that's yeah. that's why i wasn't able to see it okay that makes sense again this is new for me too so it's gonna be uh it's gonna be interesting yeah yeah we can see everybody's screen like if their video is on we can see their faces and um, if it's not, we just see a picture for them. Yeah, see when I'm sharing, I don't think I get that. Yeah. You would have to join again separately. As Maybe, maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll do that on my phone or something like that. Yeah. Because as it is, I'm already using, 
I've got my other computer up so I can access Canvas. So I'm doing this on the computer. I've got the iPad that I'm doing the whiteboard on. So it'll be like juggling chainsaws. Yeah. There's the chat. There we go. Go into that. So yep, fun stuff. So I missed the beginning. Are we we doing a different instead of the digestive system? So yes. Yeah, so, so what I so here's what I've been saying. Um, 4.30 has an exam tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that has been my sole focus for the past week, trying to get a lab and lecture exam online that has some modicum of you know, integrity to it. Um, but in the back of my mind, what I've been concerned about while I've been struggling to do this is that if we do the digestive system next, we have three lectures and then we have an exam. Yeah. And I would like to avoid that. So what I've been noodling with, and I'm probably 90% sure I'm going to do it unless something weird happens, is that if we switch units, because it's not like 430 where everything builds on everything else, right. each unit is kind of independent. So if we switch uh, to the um, respiratory system and urinary system, that's basically six lectures before we have to have the next exam. And so that should hopefully take us to or close to or even past spring break. And then hopefully at that point, we'll have a better sense of when and if we're coming back. And so we can deal with those things that way. So I think I'm going to, I think in all likelihood, I'm going to switch those two units. I know for the past few days, you guys have been working on the digestive system, but it's not like you're not going to need to know that information. So it isn't like it isn't going to be useful, but I think this format what we're doing right now i think is not a horrible way to teach it's not a preferred way to teach but it's not a horrible way to have to do this stuff mm -hmm. so i i'm okay with that if we you know if we have to do this this way i'm hoping it'll work and it'll turn out okay we're not going to get as much hands-on time in the classroom with the resources and material that are there mm -hmm. so it's going to put more of an onus on you guys that way but at least the lectures i think can this is not a horrible way to do the lectures yeah well, I, I know I took um, 4.30 at uh, Kasumnas, mm -hmm. and they have an online thing called the Virtual Anatomy Lab, um, but I haven't really seen a link for that on ARC's website, but it's like, like someone took a picture of like all of the models that are in the lab, and um, has labels there's like an unlabeled picture and then like a labeled picture and so that might be an alternative way to like study models absolutely yeah so that is definitely something that we need to do is get a hold of us at crc that's done that i know i know uh, city for a while was talking about doing something like that yeah we we haven't mostly because being a larger department it's harder to coordinate those things you would think it'd be easier but it's harder because we yeah. have i mean uh, we have a very entrenched anatomy and physiology department i have been on campus for this is my 12th 13th year something like that that i've been full-time at ar and i'm still the uh, junior a and p instructor everybody else there has been there longer than me so sometimes getting people like that to coordinate to do things in other people's interest other than theirs is kind of hard to motivate sometimes. But if we can get someone like that to share their resources, because I assume all, all the models and stuff are something similar, that would be definitely something that would be useful. Yeah, they're very similar. There are some that are that we have that they don't on the um, online thing. Right. Um, but let me see if I can just pull that up real quick and put it in the chat. Wait, so it's not even through Canvas? It's, some, it's a separate it's, resource? It, it's through um, the CRC website. Mm. Well, if that's the case, then I'll just share the link and we'll totally steal that. And it has, it's for 430 and 431. So it has like bones and stuff too and some histology so like your 430 students could use it too and you don't have to be a you don't have to sign in anyway to get access to it 
Oh, we're totally stealing that. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take advantage of that. Okay, I will. I will add that link to our uh, to our website. Yeah. Oops. But yeah, so uh, so what I will be doing most likely with the four thirty one is changing the sections just because I think it's it makes more sense that way, and then um, then I'll change the dates and I'll reset the schedule and then I'll also post that resource as well. Then that'll be good for my four thirty one as well. So, I mean for yeah for four thirty as well. So yeah, so we'll do that. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Hannah, you do not need an access code for the practice exam. Uh, however, there are a couple steps that you need to do first. Uh, the first thing that you'll need to do to take the practice exam is to uh, log on to uh, Canvas through Chrome. You have to go through Chrome. Then once you are on our homepage in Canvas, on the tabs on the left-hand side, there is one that I believe it's called Secure Exam Proctor. You have to click that Secure Exam Proctor, and what that'll do is that'll either link your Proctorio or it will have you download the extension for Proctorio to your Chrome browser. Once that is set up, then uh, that tab will actually disappear on the left-hand side, and that way you know you've done it correctly. I believe it's right above or below the quiz. I think it's right above the quiz um, tab. Once you do that, then what happens is that Proctorio automatically puts in that access code. So I don't even have the access code. Proctorio does that. Uh, so you have to get the Proctorio set up, have it be on that compatible, have all the other things closed and everything else, follow the directions on that. But if you click on those things, then you'll be able to access it and do it that way. So hopefully that helps, Anna. Yeah, and make sure you get on and do that today. Because like I said, while, as I was talking about earlier when, when other people are on, while the questions that are on there are kind of, I guess, irrelevant or, or less important, they're, they're more esoteric type questions. Really, the point of it is to see the practice and, and understand the process, know how to get on, know how to do the, the exam so that you can do it for real tomorrow. Are you guys have any other questions? I need to be making a list. Uh, need a pen and a paper. All right, so I'm gonna add that link. And I'm going to adjust the 430 side schedule. Again, I'm going to look at it and see how it works. But I, I think, like I said, I'm 90% certain we're going to switch to uh, respiratory. The only downside about that is we don't get to do the sheep pluck. The sheep pluck is basically the trachea, lungs, heart, typically the liver of the um, of the sheep, and we bring it in and we inflate it. But we'll we'll still find time to get that lab because we have a pluck for us. So. We're just gonna, when we get back in the classroom, we're gonna have some wet lab uh, jumbleness to deal with. Um. I think that, uh, again, and one of the things that, that I mentioned earlier is because doing this exam online is a less ideal format, uh, I want to de-emphasize this exam. And one of the ways we're going to de-emphasize this exam is by um, having it worth less points. Uh, the other thing, too, is time is of an issue. Again, to to, uh, to encourage honesty on the exam, 
uh, and to discourage taking the time to research and cheat and look at notes and things along those lines. Uh, it's going to have a very tight schedule. And since I can't limit how much time is available per question, uh, it, it would be harder. I think with it, it would take more time to do multiple choice questions and it would give more time for other things. And again, the format of one question at a time and not being go back. I, I don't think it lends itself well to multiple choice questions. So I think we're just going to nuts and bolt it and it's just going to be essay questions, just like the practice exam is. Because I think that, uh, again, that allows you to be descriptive, show your knowledge, do it in a quick and, and efficient manner so that uh, the test can be done in a timely fashion. So no, there's not gonna be any multiple choice questions on the lecture exam. And then the lab exam obviously is just all identification. Uh, you are going to, when you answer the questions, they're all the format of all the questions, even the uh, lab exam is essay questions. I have that set up because if you try to do it as a fill in the blank, the format for the answer matters. So for instance, if the answer is the, you know, trochlea of the humerus, and you write trochlea of the humerus, or you write trochlea humerus, or you write humerus trochlea, all of those are different answers. And so I either have to try to have all those as options, or it gets marked wrong. And so since they're all essay questions, uh, what that means is that uh, I will be grading them manually. So when you complete it, you'll, it'll show your grade at zero, but that's just because I'm going to have to go in and manually grade it. Uh, there'll be short answers in, uh, in, in the sense that they're essay questions. I mean, uh, it's not going to be one or two. The lab exam is one or two word answers, you know, bones and bone features and things along those lines. But no, it's going to be descriptive. It's going to be essay questions. So it's not going to be short answers. You're going to have to describe things and explain things. Um, the good news is it's still your study guide. It's still all the bones and bone features on your list. The one challenge is that you're not going to be able to hold the bones in your hand anymore. So what you want to get, what you want to do is get better at looking at pictures uh, because that's what it's all going to be. It's going to be pictures of the bones. So use your Atlas, use your textbook, use your personal anatomy lab, use those resources so that you can get used to looking at the bones and recognizing the foramen ovale or recognizing, like I said, the trophy of the humerus or the styloid process of the radius or all those kind of things so that you can identify those things on a picture. Because that's really the big difference. We've been practicing, the practice exam was all holding the bones in your hand. And now we've had to do a complete 180 to pictures of the bones. But it's still going to be pictures of the bones. It's still going to be histology. So there'll be some histology pictures, right? These same bones that are disarticulated are bones you're going to have to be able to recognize disarticulated. So all the information is the same. The only difference is you're going to be looking at pictures of these things now. I'm glad. And like I said, if you have any other questions, uh, I'll be here till one or also you can, uh, uh, you're also welcome to, uh, to, to email me any questions before the exam. And again, one last thing, uh, uh, again, remember the lab and lecture exams, you'll be able to take in whichever order you want instead of uh, having to take the lab first and then the lecture, you can take them in any order. I encourage you to take a break between them. Just make sure you complete them within the time. And we have a pretty broad window to give people flexibility for their schedule. Glad to be a service. Excellent, we have some new faces. So uh, as you can see, this is gonna be the format uh, for our lecture. As you can see right now, I'm sharing my outline. So we have the opportunity to go through and I'll do my lectures this way. Oops. And then the other thing that we will be able to do uh, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, I do have a whiteboard set up. So let me uh, switch to that. Takes a few minutes, so it's not quite as uh, intuitive as just turning and writing on the board. But I do have uh, a nice big screen here where I'll be able to, so as we learn the uh, you know muscular system, we can talk about the myofibril that is an organelle made up of sarcomeres. 
And we can pull one of those sarcomeres out and see how they go from Z disc to uh, Z disc over here. And then we have the actin that connects to it and the myosin in between with the myosin heads and all the other components. So I'll be able to continue to do all my amazing, horrible drawings. If you think my drawings on the board are bad, just wait till you see what I can do with a, uh, an Apple stylus pen and uh, a whiteboard on this. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be atrocious, but uh, we'll hopefully be able to at least get the point across. So we'll be able to do drawings and get material and do things that way. And I can hold on to drawings. As you see, this is not the first time I've shown a myofibril. So we have that. And so that we can have those on there. So I have multiple pages that we can work with. And like I said, this will all be recorded and posted as well. Uh, you have the opportunity to ask questions uh, under participants. You should be able to raise your hand. So you have the opportunity to be able to do that. And then also there is a group chat where you can type that as well. But again, you're also welcome to have your uh, microphone on and ask questions that way as well. So if you have a microphone, you are welcome and encouraged to take advantage of that as well. So for all the new faces, any questions I can answer for you? Hopefully you've all had the opportunity to complete the practice exam for those of you who are in 430. Make sure you're familiar with that process so that uh, you are ready for the real thing tomorrow. Uh, for those of you who are in 431, as I've mentioned to a couple of people already, what we are likely going to do, and I'll make that decision later today, is I think we are going to switch uh, sections Rather than doing the digestive system, which is just a quick three lectures and then an exam, in hopes of avoiding having to do another online exam like I'm doing for 4.30 tomorrow, I think we're gonna to switch to the respiratory and urinary systems. That way uh, we have six lectures. That should take us close to a month to cover. And uh, so hopefully by then we'll either hit spring break or be coming back or at least have a better idea of what the schedule is going to be. So I know you guys have been studying the digestive system uh, but we're going to need to know it and get back to it eventually. But in the meantime, we will uh, switch gears to something that I think, because I think that this is not a horrible way to have to talk about the material. Um, it's not ideal. None of this is ideal. But uh, I think lecture is better suited to this than obviously the lab or definitely the exams. So the more lecturing we can do, I think the better off we'll be. So so that's going to be. The, the game plans for all of those things. So any questions I can answer for you guys? Again, I don't have any set material that I'm presenting. It was more just an opportunity to get on and give people an opportunity to uh, discuss it. Ah, endosteum is a dense irregular connective tissue, just like the periosteum is. Remember, they're identical that way. The only real difference is their location. The dense irregular connective tissue on the outer surface of the bone is the perichondrium. The dense irregular connective tissue on the inner surface of the bone is the endosteum. Uh, so Amy, uh, what I will likely do, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, I still have not finished writing the exams for tomorrow. I have them most of the way done, but I have not finished them yet. So like I said, for the whole, this whole weekend, aside from trying to figure out how I was going to do the lectures, which I knew was important, getting that done, I've also been focused primarily on my exam. Uh, I, I hope to have that done later today. So my guess is this evening. Uh, I will get that switch stuff switched over or worst case scenario tomorrow while people are taking their exams uh, I'll be on the computer a lot to answer questions and things along those lines uh, so I anticipate it because again it's not just a matter of switching which material is available it's also changing adjusting the schedule so we're gonna have to do all of that stuff so I will um, work on that and so my guess is either tonight or tomorrow at the latest I'll have that available but uh, I, like I said, I'm 90% sure we're going to switch just because it makes more sense. And that means we'll be starting with the respiratory system. So that will be our first lecture on Wednesday morning. 
So, so again, I'm 90% certain that that's going to be the case. And unless some, unless when I actually sit down and look at the schedule and look at the computer and, and actually try to work things out that way, if something weird or wonky, unexpected happens, then we may have to adjust things. But I think in all likelihood, that's going to be our, our most likely game plan. So like I said, I'm 90% certain that's the case, but I just, I haven't had a chance to look at it because I've been so focused on trying to get this silly lab exam and lecture exam for, uh, for the online, which is ridiculous, but this is what we have to do. Yeah, I certainly didn't sign up to be an online teacher, and I know you guys certainly didn't sign up to be online students, but uh, we're all gonna just have to try to do the best we can to make the best with it, and there's gonna be some growing pains and adjustment to it, but we should get through it. Like I said earlier, uh, I told the Dean I should just be able to give you all A's when we can take the rest of the semester off, but she said no. So blame her, yell at her. Also, if you haven't done so already, uh, make sure you sign up on the YouTube channel that you have access to, because like I said, that's where the lectures like this will be posted. And again, this one will be up there. And again, it's not as meaningful, although there were some good questions at the very beginning, but I think we covered all of it just right now um, so that you'll have that opportunity to ask those questions and make sure that you understand it. Uh, but more importantly, as we get to the actual content of the actual lectures, then that stuff will be there. Um, great question. Uh, for the practice exam and the practice exam only, because I'm interested in, again, I don't care about the information, but the uh, goal of it is to learn the process. You do have the ability to take it multiple times. So uh, you can't leave and come back to an exam because when you sign up to the exam, it randomly assigns you questions. Technically, you could submit, complete the exam, even if you don't answer all the questions, you can submit it, which would complete the exam, and you'd have the opportunity to come back and complete it later before the test. I mean, before 11 p.m., because again, the goal of that is to get in and uh, try it out and see how it works. On the real exam, though, you will not be able to do that. Once you start the real exam at the real time, or whenever, at whatever time you decide to start it at, you must complete it at that point. You cannot leave and come back. So for this practice exam, because again, the point of it isn't, is only to provide information on how to take a test. So as long as you're doing that, uh, yes, technically you can submit it and then take it a second time, but you cannot leave the exams and come back to it. But the, the only way you can kind of get away with it on this one is because the practice one you can attempt multiple times. Great question. Any others? Danisha, you've been quiet. Any questions? Did you fall asleep? 
It would be the first student who fell asleep during one of my lectures. Now we won't all know unless you start snoring. If students start snoring on this, that'd be awesome. But yes, it should be an interesting process for everyone. Well, your toddler doesn't find my speaking entertaining. <laughs> I tried to get my uh, my daughter to come over here and uh, and guest lecture for me, but she wasn't interested in that. She's busy in her room doing TikTok videos. Yeah, I do feel I I empathize for everybody who's dealing with little kids, dealing with this with the schools and stuff being out. I am at that enviable age where my kids want absolutely nothing to do with me. So uh, they're old enough now where, you know, they barely want to interact with me as it is. So they're not underfoot and I'm able to still be productive. Yeah, I can't imagine having to go through this with little kids. You know, depending on how old your toddler is, there is an annotation button here where you could let them uh, use the mouse. They can uh, draw here on my slides if you want to let them interact. A smiley face with a tongue. You can do stuff like that. Let them interact. <laughs> Uh, great question. So, uh, have you taken the uh, practice lab, uh, practice, blah, 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 practice lecture exam yet? Okay, so that's definitely something you're going to want to do because there are a couple hoops you have to jump through first. Make sure you log on through Canvas once you get into our, I mean, into Canvas through Chrome. Once you get into our Canvas site on the left hand side by where the um, the tabs are there's a tab for a secure exam proctor you have to click that and that will either download the proctorio um, extension for chrome or if you already have it it will sync it so that you have that and then you will take the exam then you can take the practice exam uh, i'm not using the full proctorio because of the uh, how quickly we had to do this so you're not going to be required to use your camera to film your environment and be observed the whole time you're taking the test or anything like that. But I do ask that you still maintain the integrity of the test and everything along those lines. It is a timed exam. And so for both the lab and lecture exam, they will work the same way. It is a time exam where you are presented one question at a time. Uh, each question is not timed. So again, you've got 60 minutes to complete the exam. If you don't complete it, if you go over that time, you are penalized. Uh, for going over. So it's one point per minute that you go over. So you have to watch your time carefully. Uh, so if you spend, you know, 45 minutes on the first question, then you only have 15 for all the rest of them. Uh, you will be presented a question. When you're presented that question, uh, you then will answer that question. And then once you answer that question, uh, you submit it and it is locked. You cannot go back to the previous question. So it's one question at a time for through all of them. For the lab exam, basically what will happen is you'll be presented with a picture, typically a picture of the bone, but there could be pictures of models, pictures of histology slides, things along those lines. You'll be presented with a picture, and then the format of all of them are essay questions. So there will be a space at the bottom of it where you can answer the question. So it'll ask you identify the bone or bone feature or whatever it is, and you will answer that question. And then click to submit the question and go through the next. 
For the lab exam, there will be probably somewhere between 50 and 60 questions. So you go through them once a time, you'll have close to a minute per question, so that should be plenty of time to be able to look at, figure out, and type in your answer. Uh, so probably closer to 45 seconds per question, something along those lines, uh, to be able to answer that because it's just one question. And so we'll go through it that way. Uh, the lecture exam will have, I don't know, somewhere six, eight essay questions, something along those lines. And you'll have close to an hour to be able to answer those, but it'll be the same format. You'll be presented a question. Again, they're gonna be randomly selected questions. Uh, from groups and you will have, you know, and again, you'll take the time to answer it. About 60 minutes, I haven't finished writing them yet. So again, the time will be appropriate for the number of questions. I think for the lab exam, since it's just boom and identify, boom and identify, it'll probably be, uh, you know, somewhere around 45 to 50 seconds per question is what I will give. Because again, there are gonna be some that you're gonna know right away, you're gonna be able to type the answer and move on then that gives you more time for the other ones. So I'm thinking somewhere close to 45 seconds per question. So really it's gonna depend on how many questions there are. And it'll be the same thing with the, uh, with the lecture exam again. It'll depend on how many questions as to how long it is. It's gotta be, the timing of it has to be brisk enough. It has to be short enough where you either know it or you don't. You don't have time to look the answers up because that's basically what it is. It's about maintaining the integrity of the exam. So if you had an unlimited time, then again, not you, but another student could potentially, you know, look up the information. Uh, I, I can't allow people to go back to questions because if it's a timed exam and you can go back to questions, then I could ask my roommate, Billy, you know, if I see a questions about endochondrial ossification, I could ask them to look up the information while I answer the second question, and then I can go back to the first one and answer that one. So the format is not ideal. Unfortunately, it's the way we have to have it set up for this. Uh, but uh, it's going to be tight, so you got to know your information because it's, it's going to go quick. And like I said, it's one question at a time. You have to answer it, and you can't go back, so you do need to be prepared for that. So that's why taking the chance to do the practice one will be important. All right, next question. And again, you, you don't have to type the questions. If you'd like to, to uh, speak, you're welcome to do that as well. Not required, but you, if you have a microphone, so it looks like most of you do, you're welcome to use it. Cameras as well. Of course, if you use your cameras, then uh, we'll get to see if you're in your PJs. Um, ish, they'll be curved-ish. <laughs> Again, one of the things that uh, I was mentioning earlier is that because this is not an ideal testing situation, I want to de-emphasize this exam. One of the ways I'm going to de-emphasize this exam is by having it worth fewer points. Uh, so again, the, like as as I mentioned before, when we did the station based, uh, this question, this exam usually has something like 85 questions the online version is going to be closer to somewhere between 50 and 60. So uh, there's much less information on it, much fewer points on it. Well, there's just as much information, but there's fewer points on it. So um, I anticipate it being curved, but the curve probably won't be as significant because there's fewer points. The fewer points, then there typically is going to need to be less of a curve. But, but I likely will still curve them. We'll see. I don't know. I, I honestly still haven't finished writing the exams, so I haven't even thought about the grading of them yet. Um, any other questions?
Like I said, I'm, I'm here to answer questions. I'm here to show you the format for those of you who haven't seen it yet. Uh, hopefully what you're seeing on your screen right now are my lecture slides. So we have the lecture slides and we'll go through the lecture when we actually do the lectures in the same format as we did before. Uh, I also have a whiteboard which I will be using. So if you notice, again, it's not quite as intuitive to switch to, but uh, if you give me a moment, I can get that set up. To there. And oh, where to go? There it is. So notice here I was playing earlier and I was, I wonder if I could change colors. That'd be a way to change color, right? Oh, there we go. Ooh, ready. So uh, notice I was drawing, uh, this here was our myofibril. So I was drawing that and then I pulled out a sarcomere. So we were looking at, all right, so here you see the Z discs that are along the side there, some of the proteins and the actin and our regulatory proteins. And so we'll be able to talk about all the processes and drive it and describe it and do things that way. So we'll be able to still do that and then I can bring up a new page and as we go through it. So we'll have, uh, so I'll still be able to do some drawings and things along those lines. Um, well, so again, while the format of how you take it in the exam is going to be the same, the information you're responsible for, I mean, it's different, sorry, the, the format is different. All the information is the same. Uh, the, again, one of the things that I've always said that I love about this class is that it is hard. And so I can be very simple and very straightforward. And while I can't be quite as simple and straightforward, you know, you're still on essay questions, going to have to describe processes and be descriptive and explain things and compare things and do all the things you normally do. All right. So it's all the same types of questions that are going to be that way. The lab exam is all the same information. It's all the bone features, it's all the skull features, it's all the joints, all of those materials, all of that is the same. The only difference is whereas we've been focusing on holding the bones in the hand and testing that, that being tested on it that way, now we're just gonna be looking at pictures. So uh, the good news is in some ways, the pictures are easier to study because you have those in front of you. You have your textbook, you have your lab manual, you have your histology atlas, and not histology atlas, your, your gross anatomy atlas. You have the personal anatomy lab on the, on the, uh, the master a &P, right? All of those, there's great pictures of bones on all of those things where you can look at the bones and you can look at the bone features and get used to recognizing them there. There's still gonna be histology on this. Right, there's still going to be disarticulated bones, all of those things, but you have all those resources, so it's all the same information. You're not preparing for anything new that way, you're just being tested on it in a slightly different format. And again, that's one of the reasons why I've made that practice exam the content of the practice exam isn't what's important. I just want you to familiarize yourself with the method that you're going to be taking the test so that hopefully that method won't get in the way of you showing me you have the information. But really, it's all the same preparation because it's all the same material. Happy, happy to help. Like I said, this is an awkward situation for all of us. I know doing something new, doing something different, especially in a high stressful class like this is not ideal. None of this is ideal. None of this is what any of us would have wanted or liked for this. But uh, the goal, the focus is just to remember that the goal of this is the same and we're gonna you know, do our best to, to get through this in a meaningful fashion. There are gonna be some growing pains, but this is new for all of us. You know, I did not sign up to be an online instructor. I know none of you signed up to be online students, but we're trying to make the best of a, you know, bad situation. And so with, um, you know, things the way they are with the coronavirus and us still getting information, we're learning the importance of slowing the progression of it. 
uh, to, to help with the overall health and to not overwhelm our healthcare system. Um, we're doing the best we can with this. So uh, we'll, we'll all get through it together, but I, I appreciate the challenges that are going on with this. So while the test has to be strict, it has to be um, vigorous, uh, because of the the format of this, where it's not as easy to to monitor and maintain the integrity of it, uh, but because of that, we'll do our best to de-emphasize it and try to uh, try to get through this together. All right, if there aren't any more quick questions, the one I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a quick three minute break, uh, go get another cup of coffee. So uh, again, I'm here to answer questions. You've gotten on here, you know now what's gonna be expected of you when we come to the lectures. Uh, the only, only difference when we do the lectures for real is that uh, we'll access it through Canvas. So there's a confer Zoom link on the tab in our, um, in our uh, Canvas site, so you'll get to it that way, and that way it'll just be specific to the one class. So we can do our lectures and record them, but everything else is gonna be the same. The format of this is gonna be the same. Uh, if you have more questions, then by all means, please stick around. But otherwise, if you have not done the, the test, please make sure you do that. But like I said, I'm gonna go take a quick a couple minute break so that I can, uh, so open up my coffee mug. There you go, I'm gonna go get my coffee cup. Uh, filled and then I'll be right back if you have any more questions. Otherwise, I will either uh, see you a lecture or uh, if you have any other questions, stick around or like also said, uh, you can email me and make sure you check the exam. So I'll be back in just a couple minutes.
Hey, Alex, welcome aboard. Sorry, I ran to go get a cup of coffee. Can you hear me okay? Uh, there's a participant thing where there's a uh, chat group you can add. Uh, also, uh, if you look on your participants, under participant, there's a way to say yes and no, raise your hand, do things along those lines. Can you uh, give me a yes if you see that? Can you uh, give me a thumbs up or a yes? Do you see that? Can you hear me? How about a thumbs up on your camera since I can see you? Yeah, it's supposed to be touching your face, Alex. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Alex? Oh, it says you're connecting to the audio. So you can hear me now? Okay, I you, you don't have your mic on, so I cannot hear you, although you're welcome to turn it on. Uh, you also have the option of under participants, you can like, you know, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a yes or a no or something along those lines. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you perfectly now. Okay, perfect. Um, but uh, to answer the other question uh, for the exam, um, so uh, Alina, real quickly, um, because of the quick turnaround of needing this exam uh, and the complications that go along with it, we're not going full on with the proctorio, so I'm not requiring the webcams to be on for the exam. Uh, you know, because uh, when we go full up proctorio, if we have to go full proctorio, you have to like take a picture of your surroundings and it monitors you while you're taking the exam. There are going to be restrictions in place on what you can and cannot do th during it, but I'm not going to be video recording the students during this for this exam. So uh, I do ask you not to take advantage of that, but uh, but it will uh, I will not have that. So it's going to have a very tight time schedule to keep you going. Uh, uh, and to uh, discourage cheating, but technically I will not be watching on the webcam. So you don't have to have your webcam up and running to take the exam tomorrow. Does that answer your question, Elena? So while she's doing that, Alex, as you can see, I've got the, uh, we've got the lecture slides here. So this is how we're gonna do the lecture. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, one of the things that I've been talking about with students, and I'm probably 90% likely to do it, is that I think we are going to switch uh, from the digestive system to the respiratory and urinary. Uh, my sole focus for the past couple days have been trying to get the lab and lecture exams for our 430 class that has to be tomorrow done and completed. So, but in the back of the mind, I've been thinking I don't want to do this again with uh, our 431 class. So, so what you're telling me is that we're playing second fiddle right now. That's fine. No, what I'm telling you is that in the best interest of avoiding having to do an online exam with you guys, yeah. uh, rather th to avoid this hassle, what I think would be best is to switch to a section that has six lectures instead of three lectures. Because right. while this format is not ideal, there are definitely some things we can do. As you can see, I've got my slides, so I'll be able to talk to my slides and do things that way. The other thing that I can do and it takes me a moment to get it set up, but uh, the other thing that I'm able to do is I have a whiteboard basically here. As you can see earlier, I was drawing a, a myofibrial and a sarcomere, so I was able to do that. So again, you can see right where our, uh, myomycin is and our myosin heads and all of those. So I can still mm -hmm. do the drawings and do descriptions and do things that way as well. So I'll be able to provide information that way and then possibly even take advantage of some of the modified mastery and P things like the personal anatomy lab and things along those lines to do those types of activities. Okay. I think it will, it's, while it's not ideal, I think this format lends itself better to lecture than it does to exam. Sure. And so, uh, so switching, so it's, it's not like 430 where everything builds on everything else. 
mm -hmm. each unit is kind of independent. So I think it, it makes more intuitive sense to switch uh, just so that we can take advantage of the benefits of these things without having to deal with all of the, the negative repercussions. So since sure. we don't, they still refuse to give us a time of how long this will be going on for, I'm hoping that will help to stretch things out and hopefully we can avoid having to do another online exam like I'm doing with my 430 class. Fair enough. I will, I'm 90% certain that's going to happen. Uh, I uh, have not finished the exams yet, so I need to finish that today. So either tonight or tomorrow morning, I will confirm that. And then when I do that, I will, sh I will post a new schedule. I will also shift the information that is available on Canvas so that it's the respiratory and urinary stuff instead of the digestive stuff. Okay. And we'll start that lecture uh, sleeping in with 8 o'clock on, uh, on uh, Wednesday. Sounds like a plan. Excellent. Any other questions I can answer for you? Nope. I think we're good to go. Awesome. Excellent. So that was the goal is to make sure this thing works properly. So thank you for Perfect. stopping by. Looks good. Thank you. All right. See you. So what about you, Alina? Any more questions I can answer for you? No, you are, again, you're not gonna be required to use the webcams during lecture. If you want to have it on, that'd be great. Uh, Alex obviously had it on right there, and so we were able to see that. Uh, one of the nice things, I had a student on earlier who had a question, and with her uh, camera, she was able to show me the part of the textbook she was confused about. She was confused about one of the illustrations, so she was able to do that. So again, you can turn it on selectively. Notice I don't have mine on. Part of it is because I'm sharing the screen with the different things, like the lectures and, and all of that stuff, but... Um, but it's not required, so I'm not going to require. And again, you can use your microphone to ask questions, or you can type them like you're doing now. So all of that is fine. Again, the goal is just to make sure that you're getting the information however you want to. It's like in classroom. You can raise your hand and ask questions, or you can just sit quietly and, and, and follow along. So that's all you're going to be required to do here. I'm not going to force participation or force cameras on to make sure that everybody's paying attention and nobody's sleeping or anything like that. So no. That's not going to be the idea. The idea is just to give you as many ways as possible to interact with me to make sure you get the information. Yep, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad this works. So again, this whole situation is kind of crazy, but um, we'll do our best to, to make it work right. By the way, don't take it personal that I keep muting the, the microphone. I'm eating my lunch, and so I just didn't want you to have to hear me chewing. Yeah, the only microphone is the, that I have is a nice one that my daughter uses to record her music for her music class. So I don't know how sensitive it is. <laughs> I don't. I figure nobody wants to hear me chewing. Yeah, the whole situation's funny. So I guess if uh, if we're not laughing about it, then we're going to be crying. So I guess this is laughing is definitely better. Yeah, I missed my humorous bone already. I was hoping to see it during the exam, but I guess that's not going to happen. Well, you'll just see a picture of the humorous bone instead. So you have your funny bone instead. So uh, I'm sure 
I'm sure it will find its way onto the exam. It just won't be as fun. Have you taken the practice exam yet? Uh, yes, I did. Um, I probably did about 15 minutes ago. Yeah, I did it um, right before I got back. Okay, online. Cool. And it worked pro smoothly? You didn't have any problems with it? Uh, yeah, everything went fine. Other than I just need more studying. So. Right. Well, so and I guess that's the one nice thing about the format, too, is you have we have a little bit more flexibility of the time of when you take it as well. So just make sure you give yourself enough time to complete it within the window that it's due. And again, um, don't use those questions as being indicative of the type of questions that are on the exam. Those are just, again, the, the point of that practice exam wasn't the content of it. It was just to have something, you know, skeletal system related, but mostly it was about just making sure everybody could get the testing process to work. Okay. But yeah, I guarantee there's not gonna be a, and again, I, everybody gets randomly assigned questions, so I'm not sure which one you got. But one of the first questions for most people involve like alphabetizing the bones of like the arm or the leg or the skull or something like that. That's clearly not going to be a question on the real exam. It was just like I said, I was just trying to pull, you know, random pieces of information out, just something to have questions so people could see the process. Yeah. However, the one thing I will remind you of, because I had to notice because I have been looking at people's answers is again, as I always say, remember people lose points not because they don't know the information, but because they don't read the questions. You know, for instance, if I ask someone to alphabetize the bones of the arm, uh, and again, did, did you get one of those questions? Uh, yes, I got the I got the arm one. Okay, so I had a couple people. I haven't looked at yours, so I don't know what it is. Uh, but like, for instance, they just did the radius, the ulna, and the humerus. Right, but you gotta remember, part of the arm is also all eight carpal bones, the metacarpals and the phalanges. So, and again, I don't know, you know, but th so make sure you do all the bones of that. Or what I also had somebody do is list all of the bone features. So all of the bone features of the humerus in alphabetical order, or all the bone features of the radius in alphabetical order. And that's not what it was, it was just the bones, right? So, you know, so it'd be like capitate and then handmade and then humorous or whatever the order is. I don't I haven't actually, I don't even know what the right answer is. I just, like I said, the point wasn't the information. It was more just the process. Oh, well, I got that one wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, but like I said, no. it, was, it wasn't a real question. And again, it isn't even necessarily meaningful information, but the point was just to, uh, to see how the process works. But it is a good reminder especially because you're not going to have the opportunity to go back to a question, right? So once you answer a question, that's it. It's set. It's locked. You can't go back to it. So you really need to look at the question, think about what the right answer is to that, and then write that right answer. So try not to rush, even though there is a time limit. Take your time, read the question carefully, and make sure you can answer it. Okay? Yeah. And like I said before, it's going to be worth fewer points. Both the lab and lecture exam are going to be worth fewer points than they normally are because since this is a less than ideal situation, I want to de-emphasize the impact that these tests have on people's grades. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. So are there um, any other questions? Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, no, I was just wondering if you knew about how long maybe this like will be on will be doing the lectures online no one of the frustrations is there's been a tremendous lack of communication with our um district there are some edicts that they have set down that are incredibly strict like for instance other universities are allowing you know professors on campus so they can meet with students one-on-one -on -one or other limited interactions um, or, or at least allowing, for instance, luckily I have a, you know, a space in my house where I have kind of a quote unquote office where I've set up where I can do this. There's some instructors who don't have that. So some instructors were hoping to come on at least on campus to have the internet access, to use the computers, to, to, to teach from there. And we are starting Wednesday, we're forbidden to be on campus. 
So they're not allowing anybody back on campus for any reason. They're super extreme that way. And they refuse to give us a timetable of when this is going to end. From communications we've had with other school districts, like my kids are both off, uh, they anticipate it going through spring break and then expect to come back after spring break. I'm hoping our schedule will be something similar to that, but I don't actually know that for certain. So yeah, so they unfortunately have not given us any information. So I'm hoping by spring break we'll come back, but I don't actually know. This isn't fun at all. I'm sorry? This isn't fun at all. No, I, I agree wholeheartedly, but I mean, you are absolutely right. It is not fun. It is horrible that we have to do this. I did not ask to teach online. You did not ask to, to, to learn online, but the one thing I will say is it is, this coronavirus is a serious enough of a concern that has the potential to affect a large enough portion of the population that the best thing we can do to mitigate the damage is to limit the spread. Right? It's if it's not like it's not like chicken pox, where if someone gets chicken pox, you know, back in my day when I was a kid, if someone got chicken pox, everybody went over to Billy's house, they all rubbed this on Billy, we all got chicken pox at the same time, we all got sick at the same time, we all got better at the same time and life moved on. But if everybody got coronavirus at the same time, our system, our healthcare system would be overrun. So really the goal is to limit the exposure, decrease the rate of exposure so that the healthcare field is able to deal with it. And so unfortunately, this is a necessary evil that we're having to deal with to try to slow the spread and, and give people a time to, to work out ways to take care of it and so that the healthcare system isn't overrun. So it is in completely inconvenient, but hopefully it's for a good cause. Um, is it okay if I can, um, if I have like any questions that I can do it like privately like this, or do you prefer that everyone? Uh, for the questions? Yes, and they're, they're in the. So what I would what I would recommend is if you have good general questions like the one about like do we have to have the webcam uh, webcams on during the lecture? The advantage of having it in the group chat uh, for public is that everybody gets to see that because that's a really good question that, that I want to be able to answer for people. But, uh, but if you have personal questions that you want to ask, then, then you're absolutely welcome to use the private uh, chat for that. Uh, but like I said, if, if it's general questions that other people would benefit from, I think there's definitely an advantage, especially even if you write it to me private, you know, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say, you know, so-and-so said or asked this, but I can still ask the question that way. So a lot of it's comfort level. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Excellent. That wave, I'm going to assume, means yes. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, great. So, again, this is going to be our new teaching format. So, as you can see, we're going to uh, uh, do the lecture this way. As you guys can see, I've got the lecture slides here that we'll be able to go through just like we normally do with all of the processes. So, we'll have all of that. Uh, also, I don't think I've shown this. I don't know if, uh, Lena, you got a chance to see this. The other thing that I can do, because I know how much you guys love my drawings, is I can, I have an iPad here. It's not as intuitive, so it takes me a minute to, come on, where is it going? There it is. So as you can see here, I have, and let me change colors again. Um, I have been doing a drawing here of like, when we get to the muscular system, Right, there's our myofibril, and out of our myofibril, we pull out a sarcomere, and we'll be able to talk about the units. So I'll be able to do drawings and, you know, be able to expand on the information in the way. Why are you not rotating? That's weird. I'm still trying to work out the kinks of this myself. But so that's going to be the format for the lecture. So that, I think that's going to be something that, that will hopefully work out pretty well. So do you have any questions for me? I don't know. Okay. I was just coming in to see how it was going to work. Right. So again, the, this will be how we do the lecture. Uh, right. Again, starting uh, starting Wednesday and Thursday, and then obviously uh, the, there's an exam tomorrow uh, for mm -hmm. the 30 class. So we've got that. Um, but yeah. Actually, so okay. I do have one question. Yes. 
So I had a lecture this morning that said um, that we weren't actually supposed to have classes today and tomorrow. Is that correct? Uh, no. So uh, what when they canceled classes on Thursday, uh, mm -hmm. what they said is that the, the class was the, the classes were suspended on campus and okay. that by Wednesday the 18th, everybody has to be online. Okay, okay, I understand. So, so basically what they're saying is that there is a transition period because some classes are gonna be able to transition faster than others. Typically, mm -hmm. this is not one of those classes that, that, that transition faster than others, but because I want to keep us as, most, as much on schedule as possible, um, to, we're gonna have the exam on Tuesday. So that's why this is not an official lecture today. Uh, uh -huh. I wanted to have the opportunity to do this, but there's still an exam tomorrow and then we'll be moving forward with that because I don't want to far, fall that far behind on our schedule. So yeah, so those people who are ready, uh, some people actually transitioned, were transitioning before they officially closed the campus as well. So yeah. again, they, they just set it up so that we have, they didn't want to give, they wanted to give some transition time before they just given a hard date on Monday, you have to be ready. But as soon as okay. we were ready, we had the ability to be able to, to start uh, presenting. So that's, so that's, that's, that, that's it there. If we weren't ready, we could have moved it, but I'm ready. And so we're going to stay on, on schedule. Okay, perfect. I just wasn't sure if like that affected the test or anything like that. No, have you taken the practice exam? I have not. I was, um, I was studying this morning and I was planning on taking it after, right, actually right after I was talking to you. Okay. So what I will tell you is the practice exam that, I mean, obviously the questions involve the skeletal system, but it, uh -huh. it the practice exam is not about the content as much as it is about understanding the process, making sure okay. you okay. get on through canvas. Yeah. So none of, I don't think any of the questions on there are questions that are really relevant I mean, it's all, you know, what I mean by relevant, but not the important. Yeah, yeah. Like, for instance, and again, I'm not giving away, like, one of the first questions is, like, you know, alpha, you know, and again, it's a group of questions, so you might not have this one. But uh -huh. an example of one of the very first questions is, put the bones of the arm in alphabetical order. Okay. Okay, I totally so Obviously, that. that involves the skeletal system, but it isn't really yeah type of question we would normally have on the exam. So, really, it's not about the content of it, more so that, because there's a couple hoops you have to jump through. You, mm -hmm. When you get on Canvas, you have to do it through Chrome. Then yeah. once you're in the classroom, you have to uh, you have to sync the Proctorio. So on the left-hand mm -hmm. side, there's a tab, and one of them is uh, Secure Exam Proctor. Mm -hmm. So if you click that, that either syncs your Proctorio if you already have it for uh, for Chrome, but if not, it downloads the extension for Chrome. And then uh, okay. And then once you and once you sync it, the way you'll know that you synced it properly is that tab where it says uh, "secure exam proctor" goes away. Oh, gotcha. So okay. Synced, then that's gone. And then once you do that, then you can click on the quiz, and it'll get you in there and do that. So really, again, the practice is more just to see the process so that you know what to expect tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Both the lab and lecture exam are going to be that way. Uh, okay. Both steps are separate. So, and you can take them in either order that you want. So take mm -hmm. one and then take the other, take a break in between, as long as you take them within the times that they're a lot of, and I think it's like 10 to six or something like that. I tried to give you guys a lot of time. Yeah. Um, as long as you take them both in there, you can take them in any order and take a break in between. But I, it's, it is a different type of format because um, you only get one question at a time. And this is true on the lab exam as well. You get the question mm -hmm. presented to you once, you put in your answer and then you lock that answer. And then you go to the next question and you can't go back to questions. Uh, you can't, so you can't think about it and go back to a question. You can't go before, you know, but you can't skip a question and then come back to it or anything like that. You have to take okay. it in the order and it is a timed exam, but it's not time. Like you only see question one for three, you know, for three minutes and then it switches to the next one. You uh -huh. have to keep track of your time. Now there is, there will be a running clock. It'll show you the running clock. Although if it freaks you out, you can't actually hide it. Um, okay but there is a running clock to help you so that you know, because again, like the lab exam is a perfect example. There's probably going to be 50 to 60 questions on it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, maybe there'll be 50 minutes or something okay. like that. Um, so if you know the first, you know, if you're really struggling with the first one, then it takes you three minutes to do that, then no, you're going to have to make that up somewhere. But 
you will be able to on the lab exam because you know the you know you you presented the humerus for instance and so you know the humerus really well so when you see that or you see the head of the femur or something really easy some questions yeah. are gonna be easier than others and they're not going to mm -hmm. require the full 40 seconds or 45 seconds or whatever it is so you'll be able okay. to make time up that way but you will want to keep track of it because if you do go over time you will be penalized okay okay sounds good so it's just going to be like you know like usual time that we have during the test uh probably a little less uh because like okay. as we talked about one of the things that i want to do is i want to de-emphasize this exam because it's not an ideal form so yeah. that means they're going to be uh worth fewer points that's one okay. of the ways to de-emphasize it so like i said as i as i mentioned at the beginning of the section when this is a station-based exam there's close to 85 questions on it yeah. i haven't fully finalized it yet but my guess is this one's going to be closer to 50 to 60. Okay. So the lab exam will have just fewer questions. It's still all the same material, bones, bone features, skull features, histology, models, all the same material. It's just pictures of them. Uh, so okay. that's all the same that way. Um, and then uh, for the lecture exam, it's just going to be essay questions. There's not going to be any fill in the blank. There's not going to be any multiple choice because that's just time filler. What, what it's yeah. going to be. The, uh, your opportunity to show me that you understand this material is going to be to describe these processes or just, you know, compare or, you know, explain processes or describe things, all those kind of things okay. in an essay format. So, so that'll be the game plan. Okay, perfect. All righty. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So yeah, take that test. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, perfect. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? You can uh, put on your camera and microphone or you can type it on the uh, group chat if you want. You have that option here, down here at the bottom. Or I don't know where it is on yours, it's on the bottom on mine. <coughs> Sorry, should have muted the mic for that. Uh, I have not finished writing the exam yet, so I don't know. My guess is, I guess, as I was just saying, it's just gonna be essay questions. Uh, so my guess is it'll probably somewhere between six and eight essay questions is going to be the exam. So yeah, so that'll that'll be the game plan for that. And the lab exam is going to be probably somewhere 50 to 60 questions. Uh, professor? Yes. Um, so how are like your office hours going to work like is will it be available at around like the same time but um, well, so like, great... do this instead maybe or how would that work you know that's a great question i haven't actually thought about that um yeah i don't see any reason why i can't hold office hours the same way uh, my guess is that I won't record the office hours the same way I do the lecture, but I could certainly be available um, after the morning class or before the afternoon class, uh, like in my normal office hours, or uh, you could always contact me by uh, email and arrange a time where we can meet and do a, uh, do a Zoom. Uh, to be able to to answer questions, so yeah, that I don't see any reason why I couldn't do office hours the exact same way. Okay. That totally makes sense. Actually, I'm going to add that to my. I have a running list of things I need to do when we're done with this, and so I will add that to that because that's actually smart. Hours. And Perfect. With your email, sorry. Um, with your email office hours, will that just be the same then? Um. um email only on I believe is it Fridays. Yeah, normally on Friday. I look, I, I, as always, I'm always on. I'm, I'm, I'm always monitoring the my email at least two or three times a day. So, uh, I, during my quote unquote online office hours, I monitor during that hour. I monitor my email much more closely uh, to make sure that I am, uh, you know, able to respond immediately to people who have questions that way. But I think with this online format it's going to be a lot more accessible. So I think it's going to be okay and easy to be able to, uh, to, uh, to, to, you know, to, to get a hold of me. And then if, if you have questions, then we can do that in a, in a zoom type conference. 
where we could, you know, have with the cameras. The, and like I said, I, I had a student earlier who had a question in the textbook and she was able to use her camera to show me the textbook and we were able to, to figure out the answer and do things that way. So I think that'd be something that'd be really easy to do. So yeah, I hadn't thought about, like I said, I literally for the past, you know, two and a half days, I've been uh, working furiously just to get our exam done. So I haven't really thought of all those kind of questions, but that's a great question. Uh, I don't know how we're going to do the lab hours. Uh, some of it, when we get to the muscle system, it's kind of like the bones where we led through it. There are some great resources. I'm, I haven't played with it yet, but the same way I can show a uh, PowerPoint presentation, I imagine I, if we use the, uh, the personal anatomy lab that I can share my screen that way and we can take a look at those things and there's some great animations. So, but yeah, there's the, the, the labs are gonna be much more self-directed. So the labs will be more self-directed. There are some physiology uh, ex exercises we're doing, but you're gonna already be doing those for the physio X. So the physio X is gonna be a helpful, great wet lab uh, type of activity, where it's a virtual wet lab that you're doing for that. And then the rest of it's gonna be, you know, mostly self-directed. I will try to provide some information, but there's also gonna be a lot of self-directed stuff that you guys are gonna to have to do to make sure that you get all the information. Mm. Great question. Um, sorry, stealing a bite of lunch. Um, homework. For the homework, I fully expect you guys to be doing the interviews, doing your homeworks, completing all those things as usual. Uh, the Physio X you'll still do online and turn in online. The homeworks you're not going to be turning in yet. So I expect you to do them because basically it's just directed studying. So you're going to do those and hold on to them. I don't want 500 emails from everybody sending me their PDFs of them. So since the goal of them is to basically force you to study, you're still going to complete them and then you're going to hold on to them. And then whenever we come back to school, you'll turn them in to get the credit for doing them. So that's how we're going to do that. So I'm not going to collect the unit reviews, um, but uh, I do still expect you to do them, but you're just not going to turn them in online or anything like that. Great questions. Any others? You have a good day as well. Call from one. I will be back in one minute. Hold on, I gotta run and go.
Well, Elena, I think we'll give people 10 more minutes. I know it said I would go till one, but I think maybe we'll go till 12.30. And if uh, no one shows up between now and then, then I think I will, unless you have more questions, I'm always happy to answer questions. But I think at 12.30, we will uh, we'll end this if uh, if no one else shows up. Fair enough. Although I think you've been here for most of the good ones. This has actually gone better than I feared it would go. Now the real question is going to be how easy is it going to be to post this? I've never had a YouTube channel before, so hopefully there aren't limits to the number of videos or the size of the videos that I can put on there. So I'll have to, we'll have to see what it says. There's supposed to be a way to do it through Canvas, but I wasn't satisfied with the way it worked. It was, wasn't working properly. So I didn't want to rely on that.
All right. So it's been about 10 minutes and no one else new has shown up. So I think I'm going to go ahead and call this. I think everybody who's going to take advantage of this is going to take advantage of this. So thank you again for coming. Uh, thanks to everyone. Uh, like I said, I will now try to get this posted on uh, YouTube and see how that goes. All right. Uh, text me if you have any questions. No, text me. Email me if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will see you guys uh, at the exam and at the first lecture. All right. Have a good day. So let's.